Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Another transfer window is in the record books and that's why today's all new news video is going to be heavily dominated and centering around the events of yesterday's transfer deadline day. A lot of deals got completed yesterday. There was a lot of late drama as well and I'm going to be reviewing the biggest headlines from yesterday. But before we get into all of that, I would like to remind you all to please like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both things are always and probably be greatly appreciated. But for now, let's get in to yesterday's deadline day headlines. All right, so we're kicking things off with a deal that took place long into the night. It was completed long into the night, even past the deadline. It was that of Delhi Alley to Everton. The deal was completed at just after midnight and was able to do so due to the relevant paperwork being submitted before the deadline was reached and therefore was able to be completed thereon. Afterwards, the move was pretty much one of the couple of big stories that was dominating yesterday's headlines as Everton were in hot pursuit of the England midfielder throughout the day with new Everton manager Frank Lampard being the key part of this deal. He was keen on bringing uh, Deli Ali to Goodison Park and in return Ali was seemingly keen on linking up with the former Chelsea and England midfielder now turned manager of course. Ali has signed a two and a half year deal with Everton whilst the deal itself was said to be an initial free transfer but eventually add-ons could take that fee up to a whopping £40 million. I personally think this move will do Ali the world of good. I think a, a change in scenery will do him the world of good. I think that obviously in the past few years his career has obviously stagnated with different managers coming in at Spurs and not taking a liking to him one for one reason or another. A change in scenery, a change in um, objectives and goals and everything like that might do him the world of good and it might reignite his career. Um, also, I think being or playing under one of the uh, best attacking midfielders of his generation and of all time in Frank Lampard uh, will obviously elevate his game, I believe. I think that the wisdom, the leadership, the guidance, the advice that Frank Lampard can give Deli Ali, a player who plays in a very similar position to what Frank Lampard used to play during his playing days, will benefit Ali uh, gratefully. Uh, so I think that this is a win-win-win situation across the entire board for everybody involved in this deal, but not more so than for Frank Lampard, his new club Everton, and of course for Delhi Ali himself. It will certainly be interesting to see whether or not Ali can get back to his best now that he is officially an Everton player. Sticking with Everton for our next story because another player who was named an Everton player yesterday was Donny van der Beek. The Dutch midfielder will join Everton from Manchester United on loan for the rest of the season and not only that but the Toffees will also be covering his wages in full from now until the end of the campaign. Of course, there was much speculation surrounding Donny throughout this entirety of this transfer window being constantly linked with a move away from United on loan throughout the majority of January. It seemed for a while that Crystal Palace was going to be his likely destination, but very late on, Everton swooped in. And again, it seems like the Lampard effect uh, was a key factor in his decision to join the Toffees at Goodison Park for the rest of the campaign. Again, it's very similar to Dele Alli, uh, another midfielder that Lampard, I'm sure, will have great influence over from now until the end of the campaign, at the end of his run as an Everton player. But from his perspective, he would just be gra grateful and happy to have more of a chance of playing uh, regularly and first-team football consistently and not just warming the bench week in, week out. A good move for Lampard and Everton and as uh, and for Donny, of course. He We may be seeing more of Donny van der Beek more consistently as the season goes on. Another one of the biggest stories from Transfer Deadline Day centered around Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and his move to Barcelona, which finally 
did happen yesterday. It was a deal that throughout the day was on and off more times than Ross and Rachel's relationship and friends. Talks had initially been reported as to have broken down. Then they were back on again. It was a crazy on and off sort of thing throughout the entirety of the day. It was a lengthy period of progressive and positive talks, it seems, between Arsenal and Barcelona before initial talks broke down. And we even had the potential for another Peter Odenwingi situation because Aubameyang actually turned up in Barcelona uh, to try and facilitate a move. Um, at the t and then, of course, when it broke that the move wasn't going to be going ahead, uh, obviously, it left uh, Bamiang a bit embarrassed and Arsenal was said to have not properly known about his trip abroad, um, to which Bamiang claimed it was just a family trip in the end. Now, no one was really buying that. People have come out since and said it genuinely was a, uh, a family trip. It was a family trip that was disguised as a way to try and facilitate the move. So either it was a genuine coincidence that his family trip just took him to Barcelona, either it's all true, or it's just spin from Aubameyang at the time to kind of cover up for an embarrassment that the move at that time wasn't going to be going ahead. So you be the judge on that one. But very late on in the day, of course, an agreement was eventually made. And despite it going past the 11 o'clock deadline, all the relevant paperwork again was submitted. And so the deal was able to be completed very late on into the night. The Gabon striker signed for Barcelona on a free transfer. And it's even being said that he will take a pay cut to join the Spanish club. It is a good move all around though, because for Arsenal, they get rid of a toxic influence on the squad. For Aubameyang, he gets back. Uh, it gets brought back into a starting 11 and a first team squad after being isolated from the Arsenal squad since December. And for Barcelona, they have acquired a new attacking player who can play as a striker or a winger, something that they've wanted to beef up their options in this transfer window. So it is a win for all parties involved with this story. Right, next story is party time for Tottenham because they finally, finally, finally managed to sign someone and then just like buses you wait for one signing and two come along at once because they signed a couple of players yesterday juventus pair dejan kulazewski and rodrigo bentoncourt uh, both signed for spurs yesterday finally ending what has been a pretty underwhelming frustrating and albeit rather embarrassing transfer window for spurs up until that point Kulazewski arrives on loan with an option to buy clause that could be around £33 million, pounds, whilst Benzincourt uh, arrives on a permanent transfer with the fee uh, that could total up to about £21.5 million pounds should certain cl uh, clauses be met after an official initial fee, of course. Both relevantly young players, a winger and a midfielder, areas that Conte has been looking to strengthen in this transfer window, of course, with the amount of names that have been flying around and linked with a move to Tottenham. They may not be everyone, uh, the most exciting of names. They may not be the first choice names that were on Antonio Conte's list. But if I was Spurs, I'd A, be happy that we signed someone. And B, I would definitely trust in Conte's judgment with this one because remember, he can get the most out of the most average of players uh, by better coaching and so on and so forth. And from the little that I've seen uh, of both players, for Kulosevsky, there is definitely potential there. And I think for Benzincourt, he will uh, slot straight into that Conte midfield and be one of the main leaders going forward, I think. So my, my advice to time will be to trust in Conte. But finally, Spurs have managed to sign someone and then made another signing straight afterwards. But it wasn't all about incomings yesterday for Tottenham. There were a few outgoings as well for Spurs as they proved to be very busy on this deadline day. We've already talked about Dele Alli going out to Everton on a permanent transfer. But also yesterday saw the departure of three players all on loan 
as Giovanni Lo Celso, Brian Gill and record signing Tangi Ndombele all went out on loan during yesterday's final day of the January transfer window. Lo Celso goes back to Spain to play for Unai Emery's Villarreal on loan for the rest of the season. Uh, Gil will be heading back to Spain as well, but he will be heading to Valencia instead, whilst Ndombele will return to his former club, Lyon. This was obviously the big one out of the, out of the trio. Uh, it was a move that could be seen as a permanent move in the summer should Lyon decide to trigger a reported £54 million buyout clause. The two clubs that are, are arranged upon and agreed upon uh, which is actually, it's actually mad considering that obviously Spurs bought him for £9 million more um, uh, when obviously he eventually made the switch from Leon to Spurs. So Leon have actually done okay out of this deal in all honesty to get him back a few years later on, on loan initially with the option to buy of course. The move to Leon is seen as a replacement and a result of the domino effect that sometimes transfer windows can have because, of course, Bruno Grimares uh, left the French club to join Newcastle a few days ago. And, of course, it's, uh, it's seen that Ndombele is going to be his replacement. So it'll be interesting to see if Ndombele can rediscover the kind of form that he previously showed at Lyon, the kind of form that made him a very wanted man across Europe, especially when he was playing very well and breaking out of the French League. But yes, overall, a very, very, very busy day for Tottenham yesterday. Next up, to a move that didn't happen yesterday. There were actually a few moves that were set to possibly happen but didn't really materialise. Jesse Lingard to either Newcastle or West Ham was one of them. But our next story is going to be focusing on Fulham and their attacking midfielder Fabio Carvalho who was going to be set for a move to Liverpool, albeit a loan back to the Championship side. But unfortunately, that move didn't materialise. Talks have been snowballing over the past few days that the attacking midfielder could be joining Liverpool from the championship side. But unfortunately, it wasn't completed in time. Negotiations took a while. Fulham wanted a substantial fee for their player as well as to be allowed to be loaned back to them for the remainder of the campaign. But eventually... Everything did seem to be agreed upon. Liverpool seemed to have agreed a fee. Medical was allegedly completed as well. Everything seemed to be going in the right direction. But unfortunately, unlike the Deli Ali situation, unlike the Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang situation, the relevant paperwork wasn't completed and submitted in time. And therefore, the move couldn't even happen after the 11 o'clock deadline. The proposed move would have seen Liverpool sign Carvalho but loan him back to the uh, promotion chasing side for the rest of the season like I mentioned but unfortunately for the Reds time ran out on this move they weren't able to beat the clock and so Fulham will keep their man for the foreseeable future. If Liverpool maintain their interest Carvalho will be available on a free transfer in the summer however the Reds could end up having to pay more because of the age he's at the move the free transfer may go to a tribunal so it could be uh, a little bit more than what Liverpool wants to pay for however to kind of sweeten the deal a little bit and to also keep Fulham uh, on side a little bit it seems that Liverpool have been uh, have let right back Nico Williams go out on loan to the championship club for the rest of the season so that will probably keep relations between them two clubs a little bit positive going forward. It may not have happened now, but if it continues and the and the admiration and the interest continues, we could be seeing Fabio Carvalho in a Liverpool shirt for next season. Another Liverpool player who left the club yesterday was that of Nat Phillips, who also went out on loan to a championship club, but this one was in the form of Bournemouth. There was growing speculation in his transfer window that a move of some kind was going to be happening for Phillips this month. I think Liverpool and Phillips probably would have preferred a more permanent move, but a loan move right now is still pretty good for all parties concerned. 
and yesterday it was revealed that all was done and dusted on a loan move to Bournemouth for the rest of the campaign. Phillips has found his playing time limited at Liverpool and that was to be expected. Last season, of course, he was brought in in the absence of Virgil van Dijk, Joe Gomez and Joel Matip, who all suffered lengthy injuries at some point during the season. But with them all returning and with Ibrahim Akanate also being brought in in the summer, that obviously meant that his playing time was going to be much more limited than what it was last season, rather than him being brought in and thrown into the deep end, so to speak. And the 24-year-old has only played a couple of times this season in the Carabao Cup and in a dead rubber Champions League game, so he's clearly not been getting the game time, which everyone again sort of expected and probably Nat Phillips did to some extent as well. It's likely that a permanent move will happen for the defender in the summer, but for now, a loan move for him is pretty good considering that he's going to a championship side chasing promotion where first team opportunities will be there for the taking. And he definitely deserves it. And like I say, it's a good move for everybody involved, in my opinion. Elsewhere, Christian Eriksen is officially back in football and back in the Premier League. We had obviously talked about this potential deal in a previous video regarding Christian Eriksen after days and reports of rumours and everything like that of him heading back to the Premier League, heading back to be uh, playing football again. It is fi it finally happened yesterday and he is part of the Brentford squad for the rest of the season. Yesterday, the Bees made it official by announcing the Danish star as their newest acquisition. Ericsson has gone through the lengthy and necessary medical and health checks to get the green light to be given his return back to football. And he has signed a six month contract with the Bees until the end of of the season and from and then from there i guess uh, they'll re review and see if he is worthy of extending his stay with the club obviously depending on his performances and of course his health as well which of course is the most important thing in this story ericsson stated himself that he wants to get into contention for the Danish squad for the World Cup that's taking place at the end of the year and he's actually joining what I believe to be a very decent Premier League club in which he can definitely showcase his attacking talents. He's technically gifted, he's very creative and very good at taking set pieces as well and I think that he'll be a worthy asset to Brentford going forward and if he can get back to his best and get back to his best performances that he's shown in recent years he will be an excellent addition to this Brentford side and hopefully can help them in scoring more goals. Either way though it will be great to see Christian Eriksen back on the pitch again very soon. And finally we come to Newcastle who of course had completed their first transfer window under their new ownership that is now in the history books and they capped it off yesterday by adding a couple of new names to their squad defender Matty Target and uh, defenders Matty Target and Dan Byrne had signed for the Magpies yesterday Target signed on loan from Aston Villa whilst Byrne signed from Brighton for a fee believed to be in the region of 13 million pounds and signed a two and a half year deal. It strengthens two areas that Newcastle have been looking to reinforce this January and it now means that Newcastle finished the transfer window having added five new faces to their squad and taking their spending to over 90 million pounds. Easily their most exciting and interesting transfer window in recent times. For me, I'm more intrigued over the Bruno Grimage move. I'm interested to see how he will fare in the Premier League. But overall, I think that it has been a very solid and very smart first transfer window under the new regime for Newcastle. And now that all is said and done, the dust has settled on yet another transfer window. It is time for the Magpies to see if they can turn around their fortunes on the pitch as they prepare for a big battle come the end of the season to try and maintain their Premier League status and move forward out of a relegation battle. Whether they'll do it or not remains to be seen, but it has been a but it is a 
end of season that promises to be exciting. It is an end of season that promises to hold a lot of intrigue for Newcastle United, especially with given how they conducted their business in January. But of course, as I always say, these are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, whatever you want to call it, of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of yesterday's transfer deadline day dealings? One of the stories that I've talked about in this video. Maybe there were some other transfers that you think I overlooked or may have missed. Some hidden gems maybe in there. Uh, who was your signing of the window? What was your signing of deadline day? So on and so forth. What do you make for the predictions for the rest of the season? I'd love to know all of your thoughts, your comments, opinions, predictions, whatever you want to call it down below in the comments section on transfer deadline day and the transfer mark overall, because I'm sure they will all make for interesting reading. Otherwise, hit the like button on the way out. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new or want to see more content like this. Both things always and forever would be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video. And I will see you all again soon in another video.